أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا وجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين My dear brothers and sisters, uh, assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to this uh, evening session uh, on um, a tafsir of the Quran. And uh, before I start, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove us from this uh, affliction as soon as possible so that we can uh, visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get back to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-barsi wal junoon wal judami wa sa'i al-asqam. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, today's uh, session is going to be about uh, the Surah Al-Hadid, uh, chapter number 57, verses 1 to 11. And I might extend one more uh, verse to kind of complete the topic, uh, if you will. So a little bit about uh, Surah, uh, Surah Al-Hadid. And according to uh, a hadith of Anas radiallahu anh, this was revealed uh, approximately 17 years after the nubuwa of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after the prophethood of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the main theme of the surah is to uh, exhort uh, the Muslims to spend uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And as we all know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he lived uh, 13 years in Mecca and then 10 years in uh, uh, Medina. So this. Uh, particular surah was revealed uh, sometime between uh, the Battle of Uhud and uh, the Treaty of uh, uh, Hudaybiyah. And we all know what happened uh, at the Battle of Uhud. Uh, initially, uh, the Muslims were winning uh, the battle, but uh, the, pro the people, some of the uh, people did not listen to the command of, uh, commandments of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they left their post, which led to uh, the defeat of the Muslims uh, in that battle. And that the defeat also emboldened uh, the people uh, in Arabia. And uh, a lot of people from Arabia, they were trying to work against, they were working against Islam and Muslims and trying to annihilate uh, the new uh, Islamic movement. So around this time, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, the surah. If you look at the surah, uh, the Muslims, they were ready to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And but they did not have the material means to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some Muslims, obviously, uh, from uh, from Medina, they were constantly spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this surah did not address those Muslims. This surah is addressing those Muslims who had the ability to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but did not spend. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in another surah, Surah Al-Hujrat, uh, chapter number 49, verse number 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the signs of a true believer. He says, Verily, the Muslims are those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and thumma lam yartabu, and they do not doubt in their belief. Not only they believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they struggle with their wealth and with their self in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones who are truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a sign of being a true Muslim is to struggle both financially and physically to help the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a matter of fact, spending and struggling at the time of difficulty especially when we are in danger of losing our life and wealth, that is more better, that is more rewarding in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than spending at the time of ease. As a matter of fact, inshallah, we will get to that uh, when we talk about uh, verse number 10 um, of the surah. So this is the situation when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. 
The Muslims were getting attacked left and right. People were trying to annihilate them, destroy the Islamic movement. And at this time, the Muslims did not have much with them. They had some manpower, but they did not have the material uh, means. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, commanding the Muslims to spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the situation when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, this surah. And again, uh, we know that it is easy to say things. It's easy to say that I'm going to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or I'm going to do so and so in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come up with all these promises to show to others that we are better. But when the time comes, are we really acting upon those promises? And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't want us to just verbally present these words that are cheap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants us to affirm our faith, not only through our words, but also through our actions. If we don't do it, then obviously we don't have the real spirit of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Tawbah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادًا فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, is commanding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, the wealth that you've got and the commerce and the business that you have and the business that in which you fear decline and loss and the dwellings and your homes that you are pleased with, if they become more loved than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and in struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and jihad, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you wait until the commands, command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes upon you. And Allah says, Allah does not guide the defiantly disobedient people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants us to understand the true essence of Islam, which is complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he says that spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our fathers, our sons, our brothers, our sisters, our relatives, our wife, those things, yes, we have to take care of them. But you also have to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not hoard it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in another surah that if you hoard the wealth, especially when you have it, when you can spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you withhold the wealth, you hoard the wealth, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then he will replace you with another generation who will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in one of those verses, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, you all been invited to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some of you from amongst you, you withhold out of greed and being miserly and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever withholds they are withholding only the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ghani he is the rich he is the one who is free of need when we are the fuqara we are the ones who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a warning and if you turn away wa in tatawallaw if you turn away, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace you with another people and those people will not be like you. And my dear brothers and sisters, we have to take caution. We have to take heed from these verses when Allah says, spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when we are financially able to spend, we should spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not withhold. And this is a great warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to be replaced by another group of people. We want to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can earn his pleasure. And before, I mean, I'm not going to go even ayah by ayah uh, 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 of, this, of these 11, 12 verses, if you will. I just want to provide uh, an, uh, an overview or a summary of these verses. So I'm starting with the, uh, the end line, if you will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the 11th verse, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَعِفَهُ لَهُ وَلَقْبَلِهُ This is the bottom line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
he is asking who is there who can give a beautiful loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can multiply that for you and for that person is greater is a generous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to take a moment and think about this my dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever wealth that we have we didn't get it we did we, it, we are not the owner of that wealth we don't own the wealth that we current we have it is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to have this wealth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a loan from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a loan from us. Even though he is the owner. Even though he is the owner of the wealth. He is the one who gave us this wealth. But he is, look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to spend the wealth, uh, spend the wealth in his cause. He says, Man hasana. Who is there who can give a beautiful loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not because he is not the owner of the wealth, but he wants us to give out of pure intention, out of our own willing willingness to give and spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any selfish motive we don't want people to call us generous we don't want people to say that such and such person gave hundred thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars no we're not doing it for that purpose we are giving because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give out of pure intention only to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we do that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promises then he will multiply that wealth and there is a greater reward both in this world and in the hereafter I want to mention two stories, and that is going to be the essence of our discussion today. Two incidents that happened at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One time, uh, a Sahabi by the name of Thalaba Ibn Hatib Al Ansari, he went to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, make a dua for me. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give me more wealth. And the Prophet وسلم, he did not like that request. He said, be happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you because Allah knows better. Because Allah knows better what is better for you, what is good for you. Because if he were to be given a lot of wealth, then you may not be able to bear the responsibility that comes with that wealth. The Prophet وسلم, did, and in that instant, he did not make the dua. Another time he came to uh, Thalaba came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for me. Make dua for me so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give, give me some wealth. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, don't you want to be like your Prophet? Oh Thalaba, don't you want to be like your Prophet? If I had, if I were to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give me mountains and valleys of gold and silver. But that is not what we want. Don't you want to be like your prophet? But he said, Ya Rasulullah, please ask dua for me. Then Allah, then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of his continuous uh, request, he said, okay, I'm going to make dua for you. And he raised his hand and he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Ya Allah, give wealth, uh, give wealth to Thalaba. Uh, and because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, Thalaba was able to get uh, some sheep. And that sheep, according to, according to the Mufassirin, they multiplied like worms. They multiplied like worms to such an extent he was not able to keep his sheep within Medina. So he had to move outside of Medina to maintain his sheep. So that's, that's how much wealth he got. That's how much wealth he got because of the dua of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, make Thalaba wealthy. And he had started with a small, uh, small herd of sheep, which grew and grew and grew. And it got to a point where he had to leave Medina. So he went and settled near a valley in Medina where he was able to keep uh, his uh, herd and whatnot. But what happened was when he was in Medina, he constantly came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He constantly came to the Masjid of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he did all his praise and congregation. But because of this wealth, he had to move outside of Medina. Then initially he was not able to come. He was able to come only for Dhuhr and Asr in congregation. He was not able to pray Fajr or Maghrib or Isha. So again, his wealth grew and grew to a certain point. Now he was not even able to come for Dhuhr and Asr. He was only able to come for Jumu'ah. And he, it got to a point where he was not even able to come for Jumu'ah. Then one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he noticed his absence. And he asked the companions, what happened to Thalaba? 
And he said, yeah, yeah Rasulullah, he got so much wealth and he had to move outside of the city. Now he's not able to come for prayers. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, O to Thalaba, O to Thalaba, O to Thalaba. He said it three times. And afterwards, after some time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he revealed the verse to take zakah from the people. خُدْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُحْتُطَحِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ Again, you know the words from Surah Tawbah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to take zakah from the people. So Allah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he appointed two people, one from uh, the tribe of Juhayna and another from the uh, tribe of Banu Salim. And he asked uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked these two people to go to the tribe of Banu Salim and collect zakah. And he especially gave his specifically gave a letter for Thalaba, indicating how much zakah he has to pay. So the two uh, companions they took the letter and they first went to Thalaba and he said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked you to pay uh, uh, to pay the zakah and he looked at the letter and he said what is this this is nothing but jizya this is nothing but the sister of jizya why do I have to pay this I don't have to pay this and he got so angry and he told the companions why don't you go go to other people collect on your way back you come back to me and let I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So the companions, he left Thalaba and he went to uh, another uh, companion, uh, another uh, companion, and he asked uh, for zakah. And the person said, "This is this is these are all the camels that I have," and he picked the best of the camels from the herd. He picked the best camels from the herd and he gave them a zakah. And the two companions who were sent by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they said, "You don't have to do this. You don't have to give the best of your camels. You can just give." Your portion, it doesn't have to be the best of the best. Why are you doing this? And he said, Allah has given me and this is what I want to give. So he gave the best of his camels as zakah. And on the way back, the two people, they stopped by uh, Thalaba asking, okay, what he wants to do? He looked at the letter one more time and he said, no, this is like, this is a sister of Jizya. I'm not going to pay. Why don't you go back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I'll decide later what I want to do. The companions came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even before the companions reached the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "O to Thalaba, O to Thalaba, O to Thalaba," and he praised the other companion who gave the best of his camels, who gave the best of his uh, camels. And Allah subhanahu wa taala He revealed some voices in Surah Tawbah about uh, uh, Tawbah about uh, Thalaba. And one of when these verses were revealed about Thalaba, one of the relatives of Thalaba was in the companion uh, was in the companionship of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he heard about these verses. He he immediately rushed back to Thalaba and he said, Thalaba, what did you do? Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed verses about you that you did such and such. What did you do? And Thalaba immediately came back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, forgive me and take my zakah. Take my zakah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded me not to take your zakah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he commanded me not to take your zakah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not take the zakah from Thalaba. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed away and Abu Bakr came to, uh, he became the Khalifa. And Thalaba came to Abu Bakr, you know, you know me Abu Bakr. You know the position that I had, uh, that I was uh, held uh, in the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why don't you take my uh, zakah? And Abu Bakr said, "The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he did not take zakah from you. How can I take your zakah?" And the Prophet and Abu Bakr said, "No, I cannot take your zakah." And Abu Bakr passed away, and Umar came as a Khalifa, and he came to Umar and he pleaded with Umar. He begged Umar to take zakah, and Umar said. The Prophet did not take your zakah. Abu Bakr did not take your zakah. How can I take your zakah? And Umar passed away and Uthman came to uh, came as the Khalifa. And he again begged to Uthman to take zakah. And Uthman said, the Prophet did not take your zakah. Abu Bakr did not take your zakah. And Umar did not take your zakah. How can I take your zakah? And he did not take a zakah. And at the time of Uthman, Thalaba passed away. Look at what wealth did to Thalaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him enough. He asked for more, but that became a bigger test that he was not able to handle. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa warned him of. Now let's contrast this incident with the incident of Abu Dahda al-Ansari.
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed man dha alladhi yuqridu Allah qardan hasana fa yudha'ifahu lahu wa lahu ajrun kareem when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse Abu Dahda al-Ansari radiyallahu anh he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he asking a loan from us and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's asking a loan from you and Abu Dahda he got hold of the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked for the hand of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he extended his hand and Abu Dahda he got hold of this hand he said Ya Rasulullah I'm giving my garden as a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm giving my garden as a loan as a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and later on uh, and uh, later on uh, Abu, uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu when he was commenting about this uh, uh, hadith he said that that garden of Abu Dahda it had 600 date palm trees 600 date palm trees and not only that he he also had a small house in that garden where he lived so when he went back when Abu Dahda, when, when Abu Dahda went back to his wife and he said oh, Umm Dahda collect all your things and collect uh, and gather the children we are going to live we gave this this garden as a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave his entire wealth including his own home for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we had done that let's say if our wives had done that or if our, if our husbands had done that what would our spouses would say do you think that they'd be happy that we gave our, our entire wealth and our home but what did Umm Dahda say? He said, you made a great deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a great deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Umm Dahda and Abu Dahda and their children walked away. My dear brothers and sisters, when we just think about this 600 date palm trees, when we just hear the palm trees, we don't know what it means. 600 palm trees, we, we might think, what's a big deal? What's a big deal? But we have to think about what this 600 palm trees can do. Each palm tree, each palm tree, they produce anywhere between 200 to 300 pounds of date every year. Each palm tree, it produces 200 to 300 date palm trees every year. And just let's take 250, uh, uh, 200, no, not palm trees, pounds of uh, dates. Each palm tree, it produces anywhere between 200 to 300 dates pounds of date every year. And just for the purpose of calculation, easy calculation, we'll just assume 250 pounds a year. 250 pounds times 600. And now we're thinking about 150,000 pounds of dates every year. Abu Dahda, he was able to get 150,000 pounds of dates every year from this garden. And if you just multiply in our, in our current world, if you just take, let's say $5 a pound of date, 150,000 pounds, that's $750,000. $750,000 is what he gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just for one year. The, the date palm trees, they last, they live for 150 years or more. And within that 150 years, they bear fruit anywhere between 50 to 80 years. 50 to 80 years, they bear fruit. So this 750K is not just for one year. It is for those 50 years or 80 years. And that is what that is what Abu Dahda gave away for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Sometimes we don't comprehend when the, when we just hear, okay, he just gave a, he gave away he gave away a garden with 600 date palm trees. We don't comprehend what he gave away. He gave away his entire livelihood for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Why, my dear brothers and sisters? Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in the next ayah. يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمَ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects all of us after the blowing of the trumpet, when we get out of our graves and walk to the plain of gathering, walk to the uh, mahshab, and we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sweating and tired getting tired and being thirsty we have to go through all that 
uh, standing for 50,000 years. And we have to go through, uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will call his people to come to his pond and to drink from the kawthar. And I, I don't want to go through the, all the events. After all these events of the Shafa'at al-Uzma and the presentation of the deeds and the reckoning of the deeds and the scales of justice, when people are gathered in groups, at that point, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will command the people in the hereafter to pass the Sirat. As they were getting ready to pass the Sirat, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will give them the light. Will give them the light. When they are given the light, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will engulf them in complete darkness. And only the people with the light can see where they are going. No one else can see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will engulf the entire akhirah on that, at that moment with complete darkness. And only people with light can see what is in front of them. And some of them will have the light as a mountain, as big as a mountain. Some of them will have the light as big as a date tree or a height of a man. Or some of them even have a small light which is the size of the index finger. And it might be on at sometimes, it might be off at sometimes, and they have to walk. But if you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promises that he will give us the light with which we can cross the sirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who spend for his sake so that we can get a larger light in the hereafter and have our easy accounting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pass the sirat in the speed of light and the end of Jannah al Firdaus. Allahumma amin wa akhru da'an. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. So, inshallah, the first question um, Do you consider it to be a greater trial um, if you are wealthy uh, or if you are poor? Um, which is the more difficult one? Both, uh, both of them uh, are, um, both of them are tests. Both of them are considered to be the test. And people who don't have the wealth, if they can, if they're not going to be patient with this test, then yes, then they're not passing the test. People who are given the wealth, and if they don't spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then of course they're not seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the greatest test. And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in the case of uh, Thaliba, when he came to uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he asked for wealth. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he knew the responsibility that comes with the wealth. He knew the responsibility that comes with the wealth, and he wasn't quite sure that Thalaba was going to be able to fulfill the responsibility. That's why he warned him, Thalaba, don't ask for this. Be content with what you have. But some people, they just think that wealth is going to solve all their problems when they are given that wealth. And when they are given the wealth, then they find out that they're not able to spend it in a way. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to spend. So both of them are tests, but just in my opinion, I would say having wealth is of a greater test because having wealth can make a person heedless. Because one of the greatest uh, fitna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in, in, in many surah, the wealth and the children are the greatest fitna. And if you're given a lot of wealth, it is possible that person thinks that he is self, uh, he can sustain himself. And he thinks that he does not need a master. He, that becomes, uh, that makes him heedless. So having wealth is a greater test than not having wealth based on my understanding. Okay, just have a look here. In the current climate with everything that's going on with COVID-19, um, there is a lot of uncertainty in many people's mind about the regularity of income that is gonna come to them Many people have already lost jobs. Yes. Um, how do we try to be like Abu Darda uh, in this particular climate when there's so un so much uncertainty around our future income coming in? I mean, Can we don't have motivation, to. inshallah. Yeah, we don't have to be like Abu Dahda, right? Abu Dahda is Abu Dahda because he gave away, gave away his entire livelihood. Abu Bakr is Abu Bakr because he gave all of his wealth for the faith's sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do. That is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is demanding us to do. The minimum that we have to do is give our zakah properly. If you look at 
the the Muslim Ummah, how many of them are actually calculating their zakah properly and giving it out? So we just have to be start with that first. Start with the niyyah that we want to at least fulfill the obligation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala placed on us, giving your zakah. And in the case of Thalaba, he was not. I mean, he was not willing to give zakah initially. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he it made it, he made it so that no one accepted the zakah when he wanted to give. So start with the obligation, which is to give at least the zakah. And beyond that, beyond whatever that you can do, inshallah, do, do your best. I'm not going to say give half your wealth or give all your wealth. That is not the, because the companions did that because they are companions. We are not companions. We are not Abu Dahda. We are not Abu Bakr. We are not Omar. We are not Uthman. But do what you can. Start with your zakah, your my primary obligation. And if you can give zakah, if you have enough wealth, to give your zakah, not only for this year, but for the next year, given the current situation. Because a lot of people, they've lost their jobs. They are in need of money, not just here in overseas, wherever you normally distribute your zakah, even though it is uh, it is better for you to distribute your zakah when you earn your money. So if you have enough money to pay your zakah, do that. But if you have more than more money so you can pay your next year's zakah in advance, do that as well. Because some of the scholars, they've said uh, that you can give zakah for two years in advance. And some scholars even extended that to uh, three years in advance. As a matter of fact, a recent fatwa came from um, uh, Amja about uh, uh, two, three weeks uh, ago. And they also confirmed this opinion that you can give your zakah uh, one year, two year, or even three years in advance. So do that. And if you have anything beyond that, inshallah, give that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is a time of need. People with regular income, people who are salaried and there is no danger to that salary, inshallah, do what you can. Because this is the time, especially people are struggling uh, to live. People who are Uber drivers and people who uh, uh, run grocery shops and restaurants and whatnot, they are suffering. They are suffering and inshallah, help them uh, uh, the best way uh, uh, that you can. But start with the obligation and then inshallah, expand uh, from there. Jazakallah Khan. With the month of Ramadan coming in just over two weeks' time, uh, inshallah, we get a lot of motivation during the month of Ramadan to give. And that motivation comes from going to the masjid, going to fundraising events, uh, etc., etc. And although many of us sometimes complain, you know, we've got this fundraiser, it's interrupting the, the Tarawih prayer, and so forth, there is still a lot of benefit and motivation that comes to us by, 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 by going there. If the month of Ramadan is going to be a unique Ramadan where we're primarily in solitude, how can we self-motivate ourselves to give more? This is the test of your Iman, right? Are we giving only because someone is asking us to give, or are we giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any external motivation? I do understand the the environment kind of helps us to give money, but now we have to really go into the fundamental intention or the purpose of your giving money uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you giving your money because someone is asking you to give, or are you giving money to seek, Allah, to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, this is going to be a unique Ramadan where now we have to dig deep inside and find out why are we going to why are we spend why are we going to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes there are not going to be fundraising events yes we're not going to be able to go to the masjid where they're going to ask uh, do fundraising and ask for money but now you have to voluntarily you have to dig deep and find that motivation within yourself your desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at all these words look at the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that i will give you the light on the day of judgment when there is no light when there is no light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that I'm going to give you the light. I'm going to give you the light. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if you spend on a widow or an orphan, that is better than fasting all days and spending qiyam, spending, uh, praying all nights. So these are the promise. The, Allah that is, this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us. 
He is better than a mujahid, the one who takes care of an orphan, the one who takes care of a widow. He is better than a mujahid who struggles in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if you take care of an orphan, then you, will, you and I will be like this in the hereafter. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he uh, closed his fingers uh, together and he said that we're going to be close as this. So we've heard all these things. So this is going to be, yes, this is going to be a unique Ramadan where we have to dig deep in ourselves and try to give as much as possible for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the test of humanity. In the past years, we might have given because someone asked us, but this, this year, when no one is asking us, when we're not attending fundraising events, when we're not going to the massage, where people are asking us uh, money, now we have to dig deep within ourselves and this is a test of our iman. And inshallah, I think we can inshallah pass the test. All you have to do is inshallah make an intention at the beginning of uh, Ramadan that you're going to do such and such. Set aside some uh, money for um, uh, for the month of Ramadan and give periodically. Uh, what, what I normally do is I give some in the first 20 days. But in the last 10 days, I ensure that I give every single day. I give a certain amount because of, of you know, the benefits of Laylatul Qadr and whatnot. So, but... You, we all have at least some idea uh, of amount that uh, some idea of how much we want to spend in the month of Ramadan. Set aside and inshallah have a plan for spending or uh, spending that money. Just imagine that the masajid, their main income is through the people. When they don't have the prayers, when they don't have the Jumu'ah, when they don't have the Taraweeh, when they don't have the regular uh, things uh, going on in the masjid, they're not getting enough money. And some masajid, they are even letting their imams go because of this situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. This should not be the case. We should be supporting our, uh, our religious leaders, our imam, our, uh, the Quran teachers, etc. This is the time that we have to show our support to them. Because if we don't support them, then who else, who else is going to support them? Some mas masajid are being forced to do this. So we have to try our best to spend uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give whatever that you can. Make an intention. Make a reminder. Encourage. Have a buddy system or something like that where you can encourage each other uh, and uh, give the money for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Form WhatsApp groups. Whatever ways that are possible, give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think when we have the proper intention with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be able to do it. Is it permissible to give zakat? to family members or relatives knowing that they are in need and have lost their jobs and if so can you specify those people we can give to and those we can't as zakat so uh, your zakah cannot be given to your uh, it says ascendants and descendants meaning that you cannot give your zakat to your parents or your grandparents, or your great grandparents, same way your children or your grandchildren, or your great grandchildren. Up and down, you cannot give zakat. But uh, you can give zakat to your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts. As a matter of fact, if you give them, then you're getting double reward. Not only you're helping them, not only you're giving them zakat, but you're also maintaining the ties of kinship. So you get two reward by spending on your relatives. So it is better to spend on your relatives, especially when you have an uncle or an aunt who don't have enough money. If they are suffering, if you have a nephew or a cousin, uh, you can spend on them uh, your zakah money. And as far as uh, women are concerned, they can do the same as well. The, the sisters can uh, do the same. They can, uh, since they are not financially responsible, the rules are a little bit uh, uh, easy on them uh, in terms of whom they can uh, give zakah. But as far as men are concerned, uh, give, you cannot go up and down, but give to um, others. Uh, give to your sisters and your brothers and your nephews and your aunts and your uncles and whatnot. Uh, and give whatever that you can. And you, you will get double reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. With the crash of the stock market and loss of jobs, many Muslims may find themselves not liable for zakat. How should, how should such people contribute in helping the Muslim community? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I agree with so that. So if it's not because, financially, if it's not financially, how can they help in other ways? Yes. So yeah. So then the nisab is very small amount. Right? We are talking about a very small nisab. We are talking about a thousand dollars or something like that. And if you have I mean, I, we have to look at the exact amount, but for, for the purpose of our conversation, I'm saying anyone who has a little bit over $1,000, they can spend. And people who are usually working in stock markets and whatnot, they are 
probably have a lot more money than thousand dollars to give away. And yes, if they have money about the nislaq, then they don't have an excuse. They still have to uh, give the uh, uh, give the zakah. But if they if they don't meet the nislaq, if they don't uh, meet the nislaq, and then if you're not able to spend uh, spend money, do other things. People, uh, for as a, as a matter of fact, uh, people are trying to uh, with the new law. They are trying to, uh, 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 with the new law, not, I don't want to say law, with the new guideline to wear masks and whatnot, we don't have masks in the, um, uh, in the stores. And I know some organizations, for example, Ikna Relief uh, is now, uh, they are uh, taking help from the volunteers to make the masks. So if you are a person who, I, who can either buy the masks and give it to Ikna Relief, or if you are a person who can sew and make your own masks, they have some guidelines in terms of how to build, uh, how to make masks and whatnot. There are many other ways that you could. This is the time for da'wah too. This is the time for da'wah to show what Muslims can do uh, for the community. You can make make your masks. Uh, reach out to the organizations like Ikna Relief and other relief organizations and see what their needs and how you can contribute and take care of your neighbors as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, if you're able to, when you're uh, if you're going out to um, make your or purchase your grocery or something like that, just check with your neighborhood if any of the old uh, um, older people from the community, if they have, if they are in need of uh, picking up a medicine or getting some groceries and whatnot, reach out to them, find their needs, and then inshallah go out and uh, get their grocery. But if you are a person who uh, uh, do your uh, grocery online. Check with your neighbors, your relatives, and see if you can place order for them as well when you are um, uh, placing your order. Uh, there are things like that, many other ways. I mean, you can, you can go out and uh, help your neighbors. I know, like I said, Ignar Relief, they give out these uh, baskets of uh, groceries to people. And if you are a person who have a large truck and doesn't mind driving around, handing out these trucks, help them out uh, in other ways than giving out your money. Uh, there are many other ways that you could do it, so. Zakalakar. When giving to uh, a charity, um, you know, there's often a question, how reputable is the charity? Is the money really going to be used for the purposes for which it's being asked for? How much should we question uh, these kind of factors or should we just give? Uh, do, do your research. Do your research. And uh, I mean, these, there are many different uh, websites that you can go to. Uh, for example, uh, there is a website called uh, charitynavigator.org. You can go to the website and look up the particular, you can type in the name of the organization and look at the rating. Uh, some of the organizations, they have uh, four out of five stars, five out of five stars and whatnot. Uh, I think four out of five stars is probably the, the max and some people get the five out of five stars too. So do your own research and after you don't have to question, you've done your part. You don't have to go question them and ask them how you're spending your money. Once you've done your research, you put the responsibility on the organization, hoping that they would do the right job. And many of these organizations, uh, on the left, are doing their best in the situation. Uh, I mean, of, of course, is doing a great job, helping and doing a great job. And of course, Islamic Relief is uh, doing a great job. And there are many other relief organizations who are, like UMR is uh, doing a great job. Just go, go out and uh, whatever organizations that you like, do your research. And once you're con once you're convinced that this organization is doing good work, give it to them, and you don't have to go deep into analyzing and trying to find out or uh, nitpicking how they're spending their money and whatnot. That's between them and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You've done your duty, you've done your research, you've done your uh, duty of giving the money to them. You, your reward is guaranteed. What they do with the money is it actually going to the person, uh, the uh, the, deserve, the, people, the people who are deserved. That is between that organization and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they will be questioned if they don't spend it the right way. And many of these organizations, we have very uh, uh, genuine and uh, uh, genuine people are running these organizations, and they're doing the right job. So uh, I don't think we have to question too much. Exactly. Okay. So inshallah, this will be the last question. Um, this surah, Surah Al-Hadid, is one of the surahs of the uh, Musabbihat, uh, mm -hmm. meaning that it begins with the glorification of Allah. Mm -hmm. And some of the specific names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned in the first few verses. Can you help us to appreciate the relationship between the glorification of Allah and the specific names that are mentioned in the first few verses in the context of what we've been called to here, which is to, to give uh, from our wealth? Yes. 
So, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I had a slide for it. Uh, due to time, I was not able to go through it. If you look at uh, the last surah, last ayah of the previous surah, which is Surah Al-Waqiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ends that surah by saying, فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ You glorify your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a response to that command, the surah, Hadith starts with Everything on this, everything on the heavens and the earth, they glorify Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, wa huwa Aziz al Hakim. As a matter of fact, like uh, the Prophet said, there are so many uh, attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that are mentioned uh, 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 mentioned in the first few verses, if you will. Aziz and Hakim and wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says huwa al-awwal wa al-akhir wa al-zahir wa al-batin wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, when, uh, when he provided the tafsir for this ayah, he said that anyone who has any doubt in their heart, any doubt in their heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to keep the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doubt about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doubt about the Quran, doubt about the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any doubt that you have, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, recite this verse. He is the first and the last and the ascendant and the intimate and he is of all things knowing. And there are other uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that is mentioned. He is the first and the last and the ascendant and the intimate and he is of all things knowing. And there are other attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is mentioned. يَعَلَمُ مَا يَلْجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ عَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصْفِرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing of everything that you do. He is in control of everything uh, that you do. لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ Everything goes back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has the dominion. He has the he has control over the heavens and the earth. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ If people who are worried about that, uh, that their wealth is going to shrink, that they, they're going to lose their wealth by uh, spending on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us he is lahu mulku samawati wal ard. The dominion of the, the dominion of the heavens and the earth, the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has unlimited power without any external influence. No one can make the prom no, no one can make no one can make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go back on his promise. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is going to multiply your reward he's going to come and multiply what you give for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no one that can take the promise away allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the sovereign and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, he, he, uh, he is the first and the last and the manifest and the hidden he is all knowledgeable he knows what is exactly in your heart he knows exactly what is in your heart. why are you giving are you giving because you want people to call yourself call, call you generous or you're giving only to seek the seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are some of the attributes i mean all these attributes if you think deeply it is to do with the subject matter of giving for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't be afraid don't be afraid to spend in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has power over everything as a matter of fact in one of the ayat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَمَا لَكُمْ وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ مِيرَاثُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And why do you not spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the inheritor of the heavens and the earth. Everything goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to be worried about it. And, and I'll just probably, uh, uh, I mean, you can go, you can go into uh, multiple attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and derive some lessons, but all of them have to do with the subject matter of spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time Jibril came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was at Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and Abu Bakr, he didn't have anything to cover himself. He just had a cloak on, on top of him and he pinned it in the, in the front. In that situation, uh, Jibril came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he uh, asked the uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Why is uh, Abu Bakr just wearing a cloak with a pin on the front?" And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Abu Bakr, he spent all his wealth before the conquest of Mecca." And Jibril alaihi wasallam he said, "Tell Abu Bakr that Allah subhanahu wa taala sent his blessings." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent his blessings and salam to Abu Bakr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking that, are you happy with your Lord, Abu Bakr? Are you, are you angry with your Lord? And when he heard this, Abu Bakr cried and cried and cried. And he said, how can I be angry 
and be indignant towards my Lord. No, I'm very pleased with my Lord. I'm very pleased with my Lord. They believed in the attributes of Abu Bakr and the companions. They believed in these attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he controls the heavens and the earth. So just because us spending the money, it's not going to go into waste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep his promise, will compensate us in this world and in the hereafter. They believed in it and they spent uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the kind of uh, belief that we need to have, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah illa illa ant. Astaghfiruku wa atubu alayk. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأسر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله نزيم السلام عليكم الله